So, hello everyone, and welcome to our Linwood's first ever webinar, Menopause and Nutrition. My name is Orlo Her, and I am here on behalf of Linwood's. It's a pleasure to host this event and have so many of you sign up to hear what we have to say. Thank you to our speakers, Emma Bardwell, registered nutritionist, health writer, and author of the Perimenopause Solution. Emma will take us through the stages of menopause and what we can do from a nutrition and lifestyle perspective to help us through the menopause. Our second speaker of the day is Heather Jackson, co-founder of JNM, the menopause partner for brands. Heather will introduce us to JNM and the tremendous work they are doing bringing brands together to provide better support for all those in menopause and signpost them to products and services that already exist. At Linwoods, our purpose is to enhance people's health and well-being, helping them to feel great every day by providing sustainable, healthy food. As part of this, part of this is around education, which is something we are really passionate about in Linwoods. We want to play a part in naturally supporting women experiencing menopause through our products and education. Communication and education can help us challenge perceptions and misunderstandings of the menopause and prompt more open discussion about it. From these discussions and from listening to our customers, we have developed a product called Menoligna, specifically for women during the menopause and postmenopause. This is World Menopause Month, and what better time to open conversation and remove the stigma around menopause. So now, I would like to hand you over to our first speaker today, Emma Bardwell. Thank you. Hello, brilliant, okay. Thank you, it's amazing to see so many of you here today. I think it's a real testament to the fact that we are finally chipping away at the stigma of menopause and we are talking about it more. Um, and as usual, I've got quite a lot to say, so I'm gonna launch straight into it. And I'm just going to go over the terminology, first of all. So menopause, you know, what actually is it? It is the day of your last period ever. Uh, from that day onwards, you are then what we call postmenopausal. And then the time leading up to menopause is called perimenopause. And that is when your hormones are often in a real kind of state of flux. And this is when symptoms can feel very discombobulating. So it's important to point out, I think, that if you are still having periods at this point, but you are having lots of symptoms, which we'll go into in a minute, you can, you know, you are, you are perimenopausal. So just because you're having periods doesn't mean that you're not perimenopausal. And I think lots of GPs aren't aware of this. Um, so they might need some gentle education. Unfortunately, you know, women's health is still very much under-researched. It's quite often misunderstood and, and quite often under-diagnosed. So we do need to sometimes advocate for ourselves. Um, now, there are lots of signs of perimenopause. New research seems to suggest that there are 50 plus um, and they range from the ones that we all know, you know, lots about, we hear about them all the time. So things like flushes and sweats um, and mood swings. And by mood swings, I mood swings, I mean the kind of, you know, feelings where you want to kind of bludgeon your family to death. I'm talking about those kind of mood swings. Um, and, you know, in the comments, you can say whether you are affected by this kind of thing. Um, but then there are lots of much less common uh, symptoms. So things like feeling like uh, you've got insects crawling under your skin, things like tinnitus, you know, even things like increased body odour, BO, itchiness, thinning hair, electric shocks, um, pins and needles, particularly in your fingers. Um, and this kind of, you know, there's weight gain, there's breast pain, there's feeling very flat and very joyless. Um, lots of women will say they just don't have any kind of motivation. They can't see the point of anything anymore. Now, I'm aware that, you know, lots of this sounds very kind of doom and gloom. And I am actually all about positivity. I am all about helping women to feel very empowered and kind of unstoppable at this time of life. And we'll delve into that a bit later. But I do think it's important that women 
know what the facts are and they know potentially what is happening to them, uh, to their to their mind and their body, and then they are empowered to be able to do something about it. And that, that psychological impact of perimenopause and menopause is very rarely given enough airtime. And I know that for lots of the clients that I see in my clinic, it's these symptoms that are the most life changing. Um, so the average age of menopause in the UK is 51. The average age of perimenopause, which remembers that lead up, is 45. But I would argue that most women are going through perimenopause. So things are that, you know, their hormones are starting to change, you know, as early as their late 30s, early 40s, but they're just not aware of it. Um, and it doesn't happen overnight. It creeps up quite insidiously. Um, I think it's important to point out too that black women, you know, South Asian women tend to go through menopause a couple of years earlier. So say kind of age 47, 48, we don't know exactly why. Like I said, there's not enough research being done on menopausal women, um, unfortunately, but you know, and genetically there also seems to be a link with early menopause. So if your mum went through an earlier menopause or your auntie, let's say, or your grand, your grandma, you might well also do that. Um, not necessarily, but it's something to have, uh, you know, in the back of your mind. It's also worth flagging up that 12% of women go through early menopause. So that's between the ages of 40 and 45. One in 100 go through it under the age of 40, one in 1,000 under the age of 30, and one in 10,000 under the age of 20. So, you know, despite what you might be told, you are never too young to be menopausal. So my youngest client was 14 when her period stopped and she was post-menopausal at the age of 15. Um, and then of course there are women who are plunged into menopause because of chemotherapy or radiotherapy or you know the removal of their ovaries as a result of a hysterectomy. So there isn't one, a one size fits all menopause journey by any stretch. Um, and you know, thankfully, positively, there are myriad ways that you can tackle perimenopause and menopause symptoms. You know, there's HRT, which is getting lots of headlines at the moment. There's non-hormone medication, which you can talk to your GP about. There's herbs, there's supplements, there's CBT, acupuncture, exercise. You know, the list is, is long and I talk about all of them in my book. And there is, of course, nutrition, and that's what we are here to talk about today. And it's one, I think, of the most powerful tools that you can have in your menopause toolkit. But it often gets overlooked in, uh, you know, in favour of things like HRT. But whether you can go down, you know, whether you decide to go down that pharmacological route or not, nutrition and lifestyle are absolutely prerequisites, I would say, at this time of life. And it, they're not just about alleviating your immediate symptoms. Um, you know, they're very important when it comes to actually future proofing your health, because after the age of 50, the biggest killer of women is actually heart disease. And nutrition plays a vital role in preventing this, along with lots of other things, you know, obesity, um, type 2 diabetes, dementia. So the symptoms of perimenopause and menopause can leave women feeling very out of control, very vulnerable, but working on your, your nutrition is very empowering. And unlike HRT, it's accessible to each and every one of us. So in a nutshell, you know, nutrition should definitely be getting more focused than it currently is. And it's something that I am very passionate about and something that I'm really kind of working on. So Kudos to to Limwoods, you know, for having these conversations and for providing us with, um, you know, products that can play a really important role within our, uh, you know, our daily nutrition. But we'll talk about that later. So what changes can you make to your diet? So very often one of the kind of problems I see is that women are very all or nothing in their approach to nutrition. So they're either on a diet or they're off a diet. They're either being good or saying, you know, sod this and jumping headfirst into kind of wine and a family pack of crisps. But so I think the key, and it's, it's something that I really kind of talk about a lot, is, is to make small changes that feel manageable but you need to be doing them consistently. And by consistently, I mean for months and months and then years. You know, we're not talking about a few days or a few weeks. A six day cleanse, a two week body blitz, it just isn't going to cut it. You're going to be left feeling very depleted and frustrated and like nothing works. 
we only really see results when we do something for a long term, uh, you know, for a long time. Um, there isn't, so, there isn't, you know, overnight miracles, unfortunately, just don't exist. So let's get into it. So, you know, the top three things I think that you can do today, um, and you will start for actually, you know, feeling some of these effects quite soon, um, even though I've just said, you know, that it takes a long time. I, it, you know, it is particularly, it depends how, what your diet is like currently. But for example, my first one, eating more protein, lots of women who start to eat more protein will immediately feel the effects. Um, and lots of us aren't eating enough. So it's protein is incredibly satiating. It fills us up. It keeps our blood glucose levels really nice and steady throughout the day. We need it to retain muscle. You know, we'd start to lose muscle from our 30s, which is quite, you know, early. I think lots of people don't realize this onwards. And protein really avoids that kind of boom or bust hunger whereby you get so ravenous and hangry that you want to eat your hand off. So, you know, the obvious protein sources are things like chicken and fish and eggs, yes, but don't forget, you know, there's lots of vegetarian and vegan, you know, plant-based sources too. So Greek yogurt, tofu, tempeh, edamame beans, um, which you can buy frozen, you know, in lots of supermarkets now. You just lightly steam them, add a bit of salt, they're delicious. In fact, all soy products are, are really good sources of protein and beans as well. Nuts and seeds, despite what you will hear on Instagram, are not, I think, great sources of protein. You'd have to eat so much that it would be, I think, uh, you know, it's it's not accessible to most of us. Now, when it comes to protein, you're aiming for about one gram of protein per kilogram of body weight. So if you're 70 um, kilograms, you will need about 70 to 100 grams a day of protein. Now, don't worry too much about the numbers. You can just instead aim for a palm sized piece of protein which, with each meal. So that is, you know, two to three eggs. It might be a small pot of authentic Greek yogurt. It might be a chicken breast. It might be, you know, half a block of tofu. Each one of those examples will give you around 20 to 30 grams of protein. Um, and the most important thing, I think, if, if that feels where, where you currently are at, if that feels, um, you know, too difficult, I would start with breakfast. Just change your breakfast. It will have a massive knock on effect with your energy levels. Um, now, in terms of keeping your bones really nice and strong and healthy, we need um, calcium. So you're looking at 700 milligrams a day. Sorry, I'm giving you lots of numbers, but I think for some people, they like to really kind of dive into the nitty gritty. Um, if you're under 50, you need 700 milligrams a day. If you are over 50, you're looking at 1200 milligrams. Um, and you can find all of this information online. Um, so, you know, you need to be looking at it from uh, getting it from food sources where possible. So things like sardines, where you eat the small bones, dairy is a great source. If you're not eating dairy, which, you know, some of us aren't, fortified plant milk. So make sure you check the label and you see that it's fortified with calcium. Give it a good shake because the calcium will often settle at the bottom of the um, container of the product. Uh, so you want to disperse it throughout, you know, kale, broccoli, dried figs, tofu, all of these things are really good sources. Um, and if you're wondering kind of where you are currently with your current calcium in, um, intake, there are calcium calculators online, which you can Google, you can plug in what you're currently eating and it will throw back the numbers. And then you can kind of gauge where you're at. And then my third thing that I think we should all be kind of really focusing on, it's the unsung hero of the nutrition world is fiber. So we get fiber from plant-based sources. Um, your gut bacteria, which you will have heard lots about, which I won't go into in too much detail now because it's a webinar all of its own, but they thrive on fiber. And in return, they produce these things called short chain fatty acids, which have a positive influence on pretty much every organ in your body. And that includes the brain. So if you are worried about cognition, if you've got um, dementia in the family, if you're uh, you know, suffering from brain fog, really upping and really concentrating on your gut health is definitely something to, you know, start focusing on. So with fiber, we're just talking, you know, it's easy. It's vegetables, it's fruit, it's pulses. So things like chickpeas, um, beans, lentils, we're talking about whole grains, uh, you know, oats, things like that. 
nuts and seeds as well, herbs, spices, all of these things count. Um, and then in terms of hormone imbalances, because I think a lot of people want to, if they're looking for an alternative from HRT, they're kind of thinking, well, you know, what can I eat in order to balance my hormones? You can't, you know, the food is never going to replace HRT, but there are definitely things that you can start to focus on in order to try to uh, maximize the production of hormones. So phytoestrogens are one of these. So they are plant-based foods that contain kind of estrogen-like compounds. So they act in a, an estrogenic type of way, but much they are much, much weaker than the estrogen that you produce in your body. So some research shows that they can be helpful for alleviating things like hot flushes, um, and they seem to work for 50% of the women, but not for the other 50%. Um, but either way, I think it's really worth including them in your diet simply because they taste good and they've got lots of other benefits. So they lower cholesterol, they, they produce, uh, they provide fiber. Um, and there's two types. One is isoflavone. So again, from soy products, you know, soy comes up a lot when we talk about menopause. So soy products like tofu, tempeh, edamame beans, and then the other type of phytoestrogen is called a lignin. And you will get that from things like flax seeds, chickpeas, sesame seeds, um, and even green and black tea, interestingly. So the best way to get them into your diet is to aim for two to three serves spread out throughout the day, ideally. That's in the research, that's where when the results were most kind of positive. So for example, you could add a tablespoon or two of ground flax on your porridge in the morning. You could have a snack of some lightly steamed edamame beans, and then you could have a tofu stir fry for dinner. And that would kind of, you know, that would give you your two to three serves. Next up, and there's lots of talk about carbohydrates at the moment online, um, if you are following any kind of menopause uh experts let's say um you don't need to avoid carbohydrates but you do need to keep your blood glucose levels really nice and steady at this time to avoid cravings um, and to help keep your mood really nice and stable so carbs are brilliant for that they but you know it's a certain kind of carb so we're not talking croissants or you know white bread things like that necessarily we're talking about slow release carbohydrates they fill us up they can actually um, play a part in serotonin production and serotonin is our happy hormone um, and that's why I think very often on restrictive diets very low carb diets things like keto women can be left feeling extremely low you know very low mood very kind of miserable um, and and I think perhaps that is one of the reasons why um, so in terms of you know the kind of slow release carbs that we're talking about things like brown rice oats um squash you know they're very much in season at the moment pumpkins um whole grains things like spelt quinoa freaker and i think a lot of people are like what the hell is freaker you know how do i get these kind of um less talked about um grains into our diet there are now lots of pre-cooked pouches, things like Merchant Gourmet is a really good brand that I often recommend to clients. You literally, you know, it's all been done for you. You just have to heat them through um, and they will last for a long time. So you can have them in your cupboards um, and they're really kind of nice, easy, simple because we want life to be simple, right? Um, they're really nice to kind of fall back on. And then the third thing that I think we need to be kind of really honing in on is omega-3. So omega-3 is a kind of, it's called a fatty acid. It's known for being anti-inflammatory. So it's very good for mitigating the inflammation that leads to chronic conditions that post-menopause we are more susceptible to. So things like heart disease, obesity, diabetes. Um, and the best way to get omega-3 is by eating oily fish twice a week. So salmon, sardines, mackerel, pilchards, herring, white bait, these are all, you know, trout, these are all um, types of oily fish. And not many of us are getting two portions in a week. So if you're not, then that is one of the supplements that I do very often uh, recommend. Um, now, there are a few things I think that you should try to avoid, although I'm very much an advocate of trying to kind of put 
add in rather than taking away. You know, there are certain things that we do need to be mindful of. Alcohol, it impacts your sleep. It can make us feel really anxious at an already anxious time. It can give you palpitations. You know, it often makes us make poorer food choices. Let you know we're less likely to um, exercise. It actually shrinks our brains. You know, there's not a lot going for it, but we have to it's it's all about moderation i think caffeine as well can also make women feel if you're very anxious and you have it let's say on an empty stomach it can make you feel quite jittery quite on edge um and if that is you then you could try swapping it for something like green tea so green tea does have the caffeine but it also has this really lovely amino acid called l-theanine which is really calming so you get that energy from from the caffeine but you also get um you, you don't get the jitters um, and then there's ultra processed food, which I'm not going to go into because I think we all know that we should be minimizing ultra processed foods. You know, they're high in sugar. They tend to be high in salt. They tend to be low in, in fiber. So they're just not super helpful. Saturated fat. We need some fat. So we need fat, you know, in order to um, make cholesterol. And actually we get we make our cholesterol is the raw ingredient for hormones. So we do need some fat but we just need to make sure that we are erring more towards um, kind of polyunsaturated and monounsaturated fats rather than butter, let's say. But, you know, again, everything in moderation. Um, now, in terms of supplements, because I know everybody loves to talk supplements, um, we should all be taking a vitamin D3. Um, ideally with K2, because that really helps to maximize uh, the absorption of calcium into the bone, which is where we need it from the age of, you know, 30 onwards. That's when our bone mineral density starts to kind of um, drop off. Um, and we are also, lots of us are quite low in, in magnesium and B vitamins. So I would recommend a high strength. It's quite hard actually to, to talk about blanket um supplement recommendations but d3 is one of them k2 with that d3 so i've just talked about that but also uh, magnesium tends to be quite beneficial for lots of women um and if you google magnesium you, you it will show up about eight or different or nine different types the one that is i think most easily absorbed that doesn't tend to have lots of side effects is magnesium glycinate so check that out um, it could be very good if you suffer from things like restless legs at night, which I know lots of menopausal women do, muscle aches, um, incidentally, vitamin D3 is also really good for, if you're deficient, you may well feel, you know, that your muscles and your bones ache, um, but magnesium also plays a role. Um, a good vitamin B complex can be extremely helpful, particularly if you are vegan or vegetarian, and if you are you know, if you're really fatigued, which I know a lot of us are. So B complex is brilliant for, for providing that kind of energy. So those would be my almost blanket kind of recommendations. I would say try them for 12 weeks. Um, and if you don't feel like they're making a difference, then honestly, I, I wouldn't bother repurchasing them. I would try and just, although, you know, D3 obviously is a um, is recommended by the government now from throughout the winter months, but I would say you probably need to be taking it in the UK throughout the year. Um, and then if you are not getting those two portions of oily fish, then I would definitely look to a good fish oil um, or an algae oil if you are vegan. And there's there's quite a few on the market at the moment. Um, we need, we need omega-3 for lots of different things, for heart, for skin, for brain, for metabolism, for blood glucose, um, uh, stability and then a final supplement that I think doesn't get enough airtime is called create particularly if you work out a lot is creatine monohydrate um, so there's quite a lot of uh, quite large-scale studies now that show that three to five grams a day can be very helpful for things like exercise performance for things like building muscle for strength um, and possibly even one of the positive side effects is with memory as well. Uh, and you can buy that in big bags. It is, it tends to become as a powder um, and I would take it, yeah, three to five grams a day, which is about, you know, a small um, teaspoon. 
And then finally, you know, if you are super stressed, then you may well, your body uses up lots of vitamin C. It also uh, incidentally uses up, stress kind of chews through our B vitamins, our zinc and our magnesium. So if you are feeling very stressed at this time, it might also be worth looking at making sure that you're getting lots of vitamin C um, and these other, you know, B vitamins, zinc, magnesium into your diet. Now, menoligna, which Linwoods, I've got one right here, which men, which Linwoods have put together, you know, have rather brilliantly put all of, you know, much of what I've just talked about into one product. So it is the kind of the mainstay of menoligna is ground flax, which, as you will remember, is you know, it's a it's a lignin, it's a type of phytoestrogen. And incidentally, it's also a rather brilliant source of fiber. Um, so we're looking at about two, two um, tablespoons of this a day can provide you with, you know, a, a really good kind of chunk of, of those nutrients. So I'd tend to put it on, I sprinkle it over porridge, I add it into overnight oats. Um, I sometimes use it as a kind of topping with other nuts and seeds or maybe some peanut butter on top of things like chia pudding. Um, and, you know, the beauty of it is, is that it tastes good, but it's also, you know, it's got a lot of kind of bang for its buck. Um, and then additionally, within Menoligma, you have got B6, which is really helpful if you are suffering from things like PMS. Um, those kind of particularly, um, you know, in the lead up to your period, if you're getting those mood swings and the, that kind of irritability, B6 can be, has been shown to be very, very helpful. Um, Menoligna also contains calcium um, and it is, uh, you know, we've already talked about it. It's needed for things like bone strength. Uh, and the, the calcium in this is actually derived from um, marine sources. So if you're, you know, if you are happy to eat uh, sorry it's so it's marine it's but it's not fish it is from an algae source so it's vegan vegetarian um which will i think that will tick a lot of boxes for a lot of you who are on here who are you know are moving more towards a plant-based way of eating it also contains b12 so again that's really vital for energy and vital if you're vegan or vegetarian because you probably aren't getting enough um, from other sources because it's mainly got from animal sources um, it contains omega-3, it contains vitamin D3 and K2. So, you know, like I said, it, it, it really does um, contain lots of the things that I've talked about and lots of the things that I think are really kind of vital for women at this time of life. So in summary, um, and I know I've probably given you quite a lot of information here, um, you know, that we've got a... Q&A, so by all means, ask if you've got any questions. But in summary, I would like to kind of really um, emphasize that this is a very, it can be a very positive and a very empowering time of life. It's not the end. And I think, you know, in, in lots of kind of um, media stories, we are shown, you know, menopause is kind of shown to be this hunched up little old lady with grey hair wearing elasticated trousers. And that very much isn't what, what menopause or, or perimenopause is by any stretch. You know, for lots of women, actually, it's the start of a kind of whole new lease of life. But we do need to be aware that these symptoms can be very very discombobulating and they but you know we we just need to be aware that we can get on top of them there is lots and lots of things that we can do there's lots of resources out there there's lots of specialists um, and there's lots of products and there's lots of you know different kind of lifestyle interventions that you can put in place in order to feel better you certainly don't have to suck it up um, so my three kind of top, yeah, my three nutrition uh, tips would be eat more calcium, more protein, more plants. That's one. Um, I would say as well, it's very wise at this time to know what your numbers are in terms of things like your iron status, your, um, your B12, your vitamin D, you know, what's happening with your thyroid. 
you can get all of these checked out with a GP, but there are also online private um, testing kits that you can do from home, just so that you've got this kind of baseline uh, from which to know whether you need to kind of work on those areas or not. And then my last tip would be, you know, get comfortable saying no. Um, I think a lot of women are, we've, we've pushed ourselves down the kind of to-do list. We need to really um, stop putting ourselves first. You know, your health, there's so much that you can do about it, but it doesn't happen by accident. You're going to have to really kind of, um, you know, take stock of this time of life and really start putting in some boundaries you know stop doing the things that you don't really want to do because you feel that you should it's your time uh, and on that hopefully very positive note i'm going to pass you back to orla over at um limwoods thank you so much emma for sharing your knowledge with us I personally find that really, really helpful and really insightful, and I'm sure all of our attendees today here did too. So if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat box or the question section. I can see there is questions already coming through, and when we are finished our two talks today, we will then have a Q&A section. So next of all, I would like to um, bring in our second speaker of the day, who is Heather Jackson, co-founder of JNM. The menopause partner for brands. Heather will introduce us to JNM and the tremendous work that they are doing bringing brands together to provide support to all those in menopause. Welcome Heather. Well thank you very much, thank you very much Linwoods and uh, abs absolutely brilliant to hear Emma as well. I was on that on that fabulous webinar with Emma there and I can't I can't congratulate you enough for highlighting the work she does on on actually what we need as nutrients in our bodies because I don't know about you but I was one of these time poor women who spent her life on calorie deficit I've done the Atkins diet the Cambridge diet you name it diet and I realized when I was what, 49 perimenopausal that I really had badly give, undernourished my body and changing my food and my supplements and and, and adding to it the, the nutrients I needed absolutely did was a game changer for me not for everyone I know but an absolute game changer for me because I really had underestimated how calories weren't important it was actually nutrients and supplements that were so um no absolutely brilliant and i completely agree with her as well it is your time you know our genome campaign of which i'll talk a bit more about in a moment is completely that we've united with 70 of the biggest brands including Linwood, to promote through october that to remind women ourselves that who are entering or going into menop men menopause or perimenopause that this really is your time your time to thrive you know for the last few years it's felt very toxic and very blame culture about menopause let's blame the doctors for why we don't know enough let's blame education let's blame society and actually you know this is this is all about now taking responsibility for ourselves as well taking it as a societal issue and recognizing that you know this is as as emma said our time, your time. You know, I want to be a woman of 53 swinging from the chandeliers. I'm at the height, the best I'll ever be skills wise. I'm at the best I'll ever be talent wise and friendship group wise and experience wise. Why wouldn't society want to reap the benefits as, of, of women of this period of our life? We're not, we or shouldn't be made to feel invisible and, and irrelevant. We really should be absolutely reviewed and, 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 and absolutely um, really brought into this. So, uh, uh, yes, yeah, so I'm really, 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 really pleased to be on here. Sorry, I'm just keep going. Please, can you hear? Click to mute yourself. No, I'm all right. So we're we're okay here. So sorry, I got a message back up. So um, but yes. Yeah, so what is Gen M, and why have Linwoods, uh, an incredible organisation, partnered with us alongside 70 of the biggest brands in the world? Well, my co-founders, Sam Simister and myself, were two perimenopausal women who actually felt that. You know, we didn't just want doctors to be able to understand and support possibly our menopause. We wanted the brands that we'd worked closely with all our lives and supported all our lives, your Marks and Spencers, your Boots, every, everyone where I wanted to find just as much as, if I, if I compare it to a marathon, you know, you wouldn't get up and run a marathon in a pair of slippers. 
underprepared, no training, not having had the right food and not having the right sleep patterns for at least six months before you entered it. So why were we allowing women like myself? I'm, I was part, I, I was in there as well. Why are we allowing women to enter the biggest marathon of their lives, the menopause that can last up to 15 years? So woefully unprepared, emotionally, physically, and mentally. Not only do we do need to look at what our body needs, but we also need to look at how we can enhance the experience of menopause. I was having hot sweats. I needed I needed pajamas that you know wicked me that didn't didn't actually just make me feel so wet and damp once I'd once I'd had my hot sweat. I wanted bedding the same. I wanted a foundation that didn't run down my face. I wanted you know I've got chopped off hair. Well, the chopped off hair was because when I was in the height of perimenopause, my hair started thinning and I started losing my hair. I wanted a shampoo that would thicken it. These were all things that actually you wouldn't go to the doctors for, but actually you wanted to find things that would support your experience better. And actually, when you walked into a store or you went online and searched menopause, you weren't given straight away signposting to products that could possibly make your experience better. And I was quite angry at this because, again, you know, I, I, I felt that brands who had been faithful to all my lives just when I really needed them seemed to be letting me down. And actually, Sam and I invested heavily in a research report because you know talking to huge companies like we've been doing you've got to have the stats behind you, you couldn't just go in as perimenopausal women and go i think things need to change and we feel invisible well we 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 had we had a credible research report produced over 4000 women and it quite clearly came up that women did feel invisible in this period of their life they felt let down by brands they felt that they needed better signposting and more importantly they needed better campaigns and actually being seen better in in um advertising and things because you can't be what you can't see and you know no offense to some of the brands out there but there's a massive difference between a 40 year old woman and, and Helen Mirren now don't get me wrong I love Helen Mirren but where's all the women in the meantime you know of of this period of time we want to see more authentic real women out there so anyway cut a long story short Sam and I decided to actually unite the biggest brands in the world because two things our research report came out with was one most women never mind men can only name between three and five symptoms of menopause when actually would you believe it or not there are 48 and i'll report repeat that 48 credible clinical and many medical symptoms of menopause and actually we need to understand these because how can we blame you know the, the workplace for not supporting us if we as women don't know what our own symptoms are how can we turn this into a societal issue when we ourselves don't know what's happening as well so we we believe that brands have the same power as they once upon a time it was the largest countries in the world that had the biggest bout power to change and influence and 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 communicate well, we know in this 21st century world that brands have the biggest power. So we felt that if as two perimenopausal women, we could make diddly squit on changing the face and the volume of menopause and normalizing the conversation. But if we united the biggest brands and had them raise campaigns with us and actually commit to serve it better and support it better, well, then we've really got some traction here. So we united companies like Marks and Spencers, Next, Linwoods, Boots, Holland and Barrett, Royal Mail, QVC, you name it, have come on board to, like I say, not only commit to serve this audience better and understand you better, because, you know, it's not, not rocket science. 4% of the population are, are vegan. Now, I haven't got a problem with vegans. My daughter's one. But actually, as a vegan, you know how much marketing spend, product development, mark, um, customer experience you won't put a meat counter next to a vegan counter all this has been done for that four percent market share now that's four percent that should be revered and looked after but if you think in the world there's 20 percent market share that's menopausal where's our signposting where's our understanding of us where's our um product development and new product development you know where's that understanding of our customer experience you're going to the majority of big stores to look for menopause products or anything that can support you and it would be in the darkest depths of peru you know and yet if they really thought that you're overall maybe sleep sleep deprived 
possibly got brain fog you're bl blinking lucky if you find the product on, on your best day anyway but adding in those symptoms it's going to make it even harder for you so we wanted to raise the awareness with brands that there's 48 symptoms of which they have many products that although they're not menopause specific they are menopause friendly and at the end of the day it's about giving women and those in menopause choice and control to control their menopause in a way that suits them because like i say not everyone's menopause is bad the majority of women in our research report said my menopause isn't that bad but actually in a 21st century world we believe that not that bad suggests it could be better and we as women don't we deserve to have a better experience of menopause you know i don't want just an okay menopause i want a great menopause i want to be able to thrive through this period i want to own it i want to be the best version of myself as i'm sure every one of you on this call does and if there's any men there or work colleagues or people who aren't in menopause yet i'm sure you want your work colleagues your family your friends your partners around you to actually want the same and it's possible to have so um Linwood's joined with us we as as a brand as as gen M, we provide reports articles awards um campaigns we give all this to our partners but more importantly we bring them all together and unite them with our badge the gen M partner badge to commit to this it, it's not just a pledge this is putting the money where their mouth is this is action speak louder than words and this is deliverable so companies like boots for instance have worked with us now on our menopause friendly sign so in the next 18 months you will see not just boots who have now piloting it in a thousand stores a menopause friendly sign highlighting you to products that could possibly support your menopause this will be going on all our partners um products and, and signage this is game changing because just as much as gluten and vegan and ethically created products are, are, are signposted now having a menopause pop badge menopause friendly badge on products that say this could possibly work for you if you're having night sweats this is climate control bedding if you're having thinning hair this is, is is a shampoo that could possibly work for you these are all things that we need and want to accommodate our menopause better because don't get me wrong you know there's the hrt out there some women can have it some people choose to have it some people can't have it but actually hrt isn't the one silver bullet nor is food just the one silver bullet we have to understand just like in the marathon you've got to have the kit you've got to have the training you've got to have the sleep you've got to have the food you've got to have it all and yes for some people um hrt does work for others it doesn't but equally on top of having HRT, that is not you just walking back from the doctors going, hey, ho, my menopause is going to be sorted out. I'm going to be worth living with and everyone else is going to love me around me. Actually, you need the food, you need the nutrients, you need the, um, you need the sleep, you need the exercise. You know, I changed radically my exercise from being a, a, a hip all the time. I love my running. I love my hip. If I wasn't hot and sweaty, I felt it wasn't worth getting out of bed for. I now do a lot more yoga, a lot more Pilates and a lot more strength exercises. And you know what? The worst thing about this is I wish I'd known about them when I was in my 20s, when I thought actually just burn your calories off and it'll be all right. I've got a better figure now than I had in my 30s when actually if I'd done all the things that I'd done now, I keep thinking, what sort of figure could I have now? I'm not being, I'm not being boastful on that. I just feel the strongest and most confident with my body that I've ever been. But that's down to the food I'm eating. I'm not dieting. I'm not starving myself. I'm eating. And also the exercise I'm doing as well. So this is all about game changing. And Gen M really has united these brands to actually come out together and raise the awareness of menopause and that's why we've done two groundbreaking campaigns already we did one in march that was about bringing men into the conversation we had men, men misunderstanding menopause shatters lives and it's just won some incredible awards for how it went viral to encourage men to be part of the conversation because let's be honest if if men the other 50 percent of the population aren't interested or are going to support us through our menopause you know we can have the best your best support in the workplace but if you're not getting it at home and around you you know it's not going to make that much difference to you because how you feel is just in on the outside is just as important as how you feel on the inside and that support care and understanding is required here so that's that's where it comes in our second campaign as i've just said was called 
um, your time. And it's been on the billboards across the country. Um, our brands have been pushing out that message. And, and actually, it is to remind ourselves, you know, let's be honest with ourselves here. The reason why many women got underpaid as to men, and I've got a lot to say on this because my previous business was all about encouraging more women in middle management, take themselves through to the executive. And I worked with 30,000 women, 150 global companies. I've always believed in equality, but equality of opportunity. And I actually believe I, I cashed in. I was ready for my not a semi-retirement. I was just going on board, swinging from the chandeliers, going to Everest Base Camp. This was going to be my time. But I was woefully knocked back by perimenopause because I was unprepared prepared for it. Now, I just thought that when I realized I was unprepared and had the bad, bad effects of it, I suddenly thought, my gosh, every other woman who's got their time in the pipeline will be feeling the same. Actually, we don't want to be knocked back by something we didn't see coming, like being hit by a bus. We need better preparation for it. So without further ado, I think it's time for me to move forward on this. But, you know, please remember, this is your time. Value yourself. Put yourself number one. The reason why, you know, we have been underpaid for so long is because we haven't valued ourselves and negotiated well. Well, don't let our health be one of these assets that we don't value. If we're good and feeling healthy, the rest of everyone around us will thrive around us, our family, our friends, our work colleagues. So put yourself number one. And I think it's time now to hand back over to Orla and have some questions from, from, from everyone out there. Thank you, Heather. I will definitely be taking up some yoga now soon after that inspirational talk. Thanks so much for sharing everything you, you, you the whole experience of JNM and your own personal experience. That's been really, really refreshing to hear. So look, we're coming really to the last section of this webinar today. And I just firstly, I want to thank everybody for sticking with us. We're moving into the Q&A section. So I'd like to firstly uh, invite Emma, if you would come along. Um, thank you, Emma. Perfect. On cue. Mm -hmm. So we'll start. Actually, many of our attendees have been submitting questions both at registration and during the course of our webinar. So the first question is for yourself, Emma, and it is, can you suggest a healthy snack in the evening as I can't eat fruit because it affects my sleep? So have you got any tips that you would like to share with our attendee with that question? Yeah, I think sometimes anything that we eat too close to bedtime can Im impact our sleep. It raises our core body temperature a, a tiny bit. So we always say that it's a good idea to try and have about three hours between your last meal and bed. Um, and I would also just kind of looping back on what I said during the talk, I would really try to aim for a big satiating protein based meal for your last meal of the day um, so that you don't have to have a snack. You know, if, if you're making that meal big enough and kind of um, robust enough, hopefully you won't need a snack. But I totally understand that sometimes it is nice to kind of put a full stop at the end of a meal with something sweet, perhaps. So I think my kind of go to would be a small pot of Greek yogurt, authentic Greek yogurt, because it's got loads of protein in it. It's really uh, it's got no added sugar or anything like that. I personally would have a little bit of honey or maple syrup because I need to have some kind of sweetness and some nut seeds, you know, ground flax, something like that. Um, if you are on Instagram, check out my um, my account, which is at emma.bardwell. I've got loads of um, kind of snack ideas in there. Um, but I, 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 something else that I really love, sorry, I could go, this could be a whole webinar in itself, a medjool date slice it open, take out the, the seed, the pip, the nut, whatever it is, um, and fill it with a little bit, not too much, of um, peanut butter. Put it in the freezer and then it kind of has this almost like caramelized um, texture. It's amazing. That's a great snack. That sounds delicious. Thanks very much, Emma. Okay, so we have a question now for yourself, Heather. Now, this one is, What's your top product recommendation for women going through the menopause? This is a question that any menopausal woman who's out there is asked so many times. But actually, as both Emma and I have said in, in, in today's thing, no one's menopause is the same. Everyone's menopause is different. 
and actually you have to find the things that work for you. I've recommended things in the past to my girlfriends and I've been really going, oh wow, get this and take it. It's worked for me and they've taken it and it's done diddly squick for them. Back to Emma talking about the 50% it works for some, 50% it doesn't. This is about trial and error and I know that's a terrible thing to have to say, but you have to find things that work for you. And actually baby steps, I always say, you know, it's about finding, making your menopause better today than yesterday. If you can do baby steps on this and actually, whether it be about your body confidence, whether it's about your sleep, whether it be, take some of the things that you're feeling and try and make them better and baby steps into finding the way forward. Because I can honestly say, if you go bullet a gate going, I've got 33 of these 48 symptoms and I'm going to sort them all out tomorrow. Believe me, you're going to struggle with it. But if you take them bit at a time possibly go and see your doctor as well then work on it so I'm not going to give one 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 product but I am going to say there are products out there that you will find that suit you and suit your menopause your way because it is essential that you control your menopause it's your own menopause you know your body better than anybody else knows your body and actually you know what's working for you and whatnot and and, and I like the fact that Emma was honest and says if some of the things after three months if you don't work don't buy them again it's trial and error life's trial and error but actually we've now got the biggest opportunity to have the products that would possibly work for us to be out there and have the choice to choose what what's right for us. Thanks, Heather. Thank, perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's a fabulous answer to that question. So, Emma, we'll go back to you then. We have another question, and this I think is a really, really interesting question. How does the menopause affect the gut metabolism? Yeah, that is a good question. Um, it affects, so estrogen actually helps with gut motility, which is the movement of food basically through your gut. So when your levels start to decline, yes, your digestion can start to slow down. So lots of women will complain of being bloated or windy or, you know, they produce lots more gas. They're a bit more farty. Um, so, yeah, this is definitely something that I see a lot. Um, so, you know, lots of fiber, we need more fiber, we need more plant foods in our diet, we need more hydration. So many women that I see are, are surviving on one or two glasses of water a day. It's such a simple fix. And if you if your brain do, um, you know, just staying hydrated can have a really positive impact. It's such a no brainer, but so many it's it's quite often overlooked and movement. Movement is really important for getting your your um, your gut moving your digestion moving fantastic as heather talked about there earlier to, um, attending yoga classes and pilates and that type of thing i'm sure that would really really help um so one more question we have for you emma um but also heather if you would like even to add into this you're more than welcome um it's around how much fiber do you recommend to a 50 plus female Yep. So um, the recommended guidelines are 30 grams a day, which doesn't mean a lot to people. So if you want to kind of I'm, I'm quite into tracking food, not every day, not for long, a long time, because I think it can for some women, it can become obsessive. But you can get something. There's an app called NutriCheck, for example, which is brilliant for this kind of thing. I think they do a seven day free trial. So you, you literally just plot in what you've eaten and it kicks out the numbers. So it will tell you how much protein you're having, tell you how much fiber, etc. But if you don't want to do that, because that sounds too overwhelming, um, you know, aiming for seven to ten. We used to say five a day, seven to ten now is the is the kind of recommended portions of, of fruit and veg. More, I would say more veg than fruit a day means you are probably getting close to your 30 grams. And if you need to have some kind of extra, then you know, ground flax is is brilliant. Um psyllium husks are brilliant. You can these are all really nice, kind of easy ways that that you can just add in to what you're already doing. Fantastic. Um, nothing to add to that. I completely agree. And I am one of those women who don't have enough fibre in the diet. And I, you know, I get I get to, to midweek and I think I, I just go for a bottle, I go for a bowl of all brand just to make sure that, that you know, it's like it, it, it's my little go to sort of thing, but it's not the best go to you can go to, but uh, it's better than nothing. It plays a role. Oh. Sorry. 
<laughs> I'm saying, Heather, we'll have to get you onto the Linwoods now for a wee bit of additional <laughs> flavour. <laughs> I have I have the uh, Greek yogurt and the honey at night time. Well, I was thinking she's going to say it any minute now. She's going to say it, sprinkle it on because I was like thinking, yes, but I am thinking about the date and peanut butter at the moment because yeah, that would sound just delicious. It does. Well, look, I'm going to open up to some questions that are coming in from the floor. And please, both of you are very welcome to um, to comment, answer, give me give your thoughts on it. So, one question we have from Camilla is, what is best in your experience for hair loss or hair thinning? So, have you come across any particular products or from a nutritional point of view, Emma, that you would actually recommend? Heather, do you want to go first? Would you? Well, I mean, it is on the product side of things. Having personally experienced it, I've, I've taken. Philip Kingsley was way ahead of itself on menopause and menopausal hair. They had special clinics and that for it as well. So I, I went I went and started to look at their shampoos and everything else. But you'll notice now there's a heck of a lot more shampoos out there for thinning hair and specifically for, you know, the understanding of the hormonal loss of hair as well. So check out. It's easy to do online, you know, the hairdress, the, the hair products that serve thinning hair now. And I, I went straight to the shampoo to start with. Um, but then one of my girlfriends who not only had um, a bad perimenopause, but she was surgical menopause, she had to go to a trichologist as well and have special treatments in on, on her scalp. Because what we forget is it's the scalp that's affected, not our hair. And so, again, don't think that thinning hair is something you've got to cope with. She's got beautiful thick hair again now. And, you know, this is not the end of it. This is just a, a, a place where you can actually get back what you had, but you've got to work on it and you've got to look and search out, uh, out the solutions for yourself. But this is, shampoo worked for me and, and eating better. But equally with her, she actually went to see the trichologist. And I do know a lot of women out there who are now deciding lack of confidence I mean there's nothing worse when you're feeling low in confidence that is in your body and everything else then your primary crown on your hair suddenly starts thinning and you keep looking in the in the in the sink and seeing more hair there than you've got on your head it is frightening and it is lonely and it is a real knock to your confidence but please any woman out there who's realizing they're having thinning hair that actually get them support you need go and talk it through with your hairdresser as well get them to cut it to a to a style that suits you as well and makes it feel thicker because again that boost of confidence you feeling good about it will absolutely help you take on the next stage of the solutions you need to find so um emma have you got anything to say on on the eating side of of this yeah i would say i i completely agree with you on all counts but and i would say try to get to the root cause because there usually is a root cause so quite often it's lack of iron when you are perimenopausal quite a lot of us are having really heavy flooding type of periods and we are walking around with low ferritin levels get them checked get your thyroid checked you know that is another cause of, of hair loss stress such a huge topic but again you know it um your body will try to hang on to its energy stores and your hair is seen as superfluous when it comes to stress so it, it's one of the first things to kind of you know not be focused on by your body so though I, I would really kind of hone in on those things and yeah talk to if it is getting to the point where uh you know it's not just a little bit of thinning where, where it is troublesome then yeah a trichologist or a dermatologist are, are both or a gp you know it's your first port of call but but those experts they are properly trained to give you the right support Fabulous. Look, we're coming really to the very last minute of our webinar, so I'm going to really draw things to a close now. Um, firstly, I really want to thank all of our attendees. Thanks for registering and, and attending today's webinar. Next month, we're actually going to have another webinar on immune support, so please look out for that. And later today, we're going to send all registered attendees a Linwoods, a 25% off discount code for the Linwoods Menoligna product that will be available on our website only. So please keep an eye out for that if you're interested. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to get through all of the questions that have came in, but I hope over the next few days through our social media channels, we'll be able to address those and try and give you the best answers that we can. 
I would really like to thank Emma and Heather for joining us today. You have been an absolute treat, so informative, but good fun as well. So I really, really appreciate you coming along. And I'd also like to thank our tech partner, Digital24, who have assisted us in bringing this webinar to you. So that really draws everything to a close. I'd like to wish everyone a lovely afternoon and thanks again for joining in and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Thank you.